It's a matter of public safety and how your taxpayer dollars are spent. Some new information tonight as Nine News investigates the risks of an unregulated weapon used by law enforcement agencies across the tri-state. Nine News anchor and I-team reporter Julie O'Neill joins us with new information in her exclusive Taser investigation. Julie? Carol, as we've been reporting since August, research shows Tasers have saved lives and reduced injuries to suspects and officers. But the death of 18-year-old Everett Howard of North College Hill after he was tased in August raised concerns of safety and liability for officers and taxpayers. We are still waiting for a ruling on Howard's cause of death, but we continue to dig into questions of the safety of tasers. This video shows the taser most used by police today. Right, what was all that for? I was being fair with you, buddy. The original taser was invented in 1969, but it was 30 years later Taser International introduced new taser technology to provide a quantum leap in stopping power. Since the widespread use of that taser in 2001, at least 500 people have died following taser stuns, according to Amnesty International. Only around 60 of those cases were definitively linked to the taser by medical examiners. Attorney John Burton won a $5 million judgment against Taser for the family of this 17-year-old who died after being tased in the chest. This is a device, the power of which was boosted by four times when the Smith brothers acquired it and then sold directly by Taser International to police departments with no intervening government uh, vetting and no peer-reviewed medical testing or studies published simply a product to make money for this company. A review of the taser by the Department of Defense in 2002 said, development of the taser appears to be based on serendipitous findings and trial and error, as opposed to well-defined scientific investigation. The reviewers gave a limited but favorable endorsement for military use. Three years later, a suit filed by Taser International's own shareholders accused the company of spending too little on initial research done by the company's original medical researcher, Dr. Robert Strotbucker. At this police chief's convention in October, I asked Taser International CEO Rick Smith about that suit, which he settled for $21 million. When they specifically say you only spent $14,000 in initial research, true or false? Uh, False. False. I mean, we were working with Dr. Strapbucker for years. And what about that you gave him stock instead of paying him? True or false? Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, when you're a small company and you don't have cash, you got to pay people with whatever you got. Now a multi-million dollar company, Smith says the taser over the years has been more studied than any other non-lethal weapon. Many of the studies funded by his company. But a September article in the American Heart Journal showed that studies funded by Taser International and or written by an author affiliated with the company are substantially more likely to conclude that tasers are safe, nearly 18 times higher odds. I contacted Taser International earlier this week asking for any peer-reviewed published studies done prior to the Taser going to market. I have not heard back. The company does point to a study released a year ago by the Department of Justice that states there is currently no medical evidence that Tasers pose a significant risk to the heart when deployed reasonably. Clyde and Carol, nowhere in this report is the word reasonably defined. Some big concerns there, Julie. Thanks for your reporting.